Well, welcome to another Eat Theatre Sleep Repeat with myself, Jed Mills and Hayley Kay. And um, well, another show that's coming to the Grand Theatre that a lot of people are very excited by. Absolutely. The rise and fall of Little Voice heads to Blackpool's Grand Theatre on the 13th of June. And we are thrilled to be, to be joined by three of the cast. That is Shovna Galati, Ian Kelsey and Christina Bianco. Thank you so much for sparing the time to join us today. Um who should we start with? Who should we, ooh, well, this is let's a just one. well, let's go in order of the placement <laughs> on the screen, and I, I'm I'm going to go with Shabna first, okay. uh, and and people will instantly recognise you, uh, Shabna. You know, famous face, and I, I well, I'm going to say I very much you you were my Mondays, Wednesdays, <laughs> Fridays, uh, <laughs> right the way through, and very much my parents with dinner ladies as well and uh, some great shows but I mean for you Sean I mean what a career you've had um and you just must feel very fortunate about sort of the, the roles you've played and the and the positions you've been in I feel very fortunate to be playing Maori Hoff right now I have to say <laughs> because this is the first time in um it, I've done a classic play where I am the driving force of the play I've, I've I've never I've never really had that before. I mean, I've done a lot of uh, theatre that's not uh, that's new writing, where I've had that kind of part. But this is my first time in a classic play, uh, so yeah, I'm feeling very fortunate about that because I think before those avenues weren't necessarily open to me, being a, a person of colour and uh, working in this industry for this length of time i know things are changing now hence this role so i'm very fortunate to play that and i'm really looking forward to you know using all my cultural roots to uh, to to bring to bring her alive on stage for you at uh, at the blackpool grand we i say it was funny just we we were speaking to rob ewins about this who's coming to the grand theater in private peaceful mm. weren't we and he was in a similar situation yeah. wasn't he that um he um, is is disabled, and he yeah. said, you know, at the end of the day, he used to just always be typecast with playing disabled roles. Yeah. But now things are changing, times are changing. He's playing roles that he would never have played before. And he said, what's really nice is that just everyone's like, oh wow, it's just as good, if not better. You know, and <laughs> shocking. It, yeah, what a exactly, concept. <laughs> exactly. And you know, he said. Yeah, we we knew we know it was just as good. We know we can do this, but it was the typecast beforehand and how much that's changed. It was interesting his thoughts yeah. and, and similar to you as well, Shaman. I think we're you know I think that there is a there's a there is a correlation there. So yeah, I think yeah. So I'm re I, I really I really enjoy playing uh, uh, little voices, mom. Um, you know, and and I think that what we do so well as a team is tell this story. So everybody comes on the journey, and uh, you know, it doesn't really matter to anybody watching what what the um, juxtaposition of, of of people are on stage because they all come with us on that story. So uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is what I've always said: if you allow an actor to play, he, she, or they will always play. Absolutely. And it's such a well-loved story. I mean, I have to say, in my mind, when I think of Little Voice, I think I, I remember seeing the film and just being swept yeah. away with the whole thing and watching it. You know, when you're a kid, you watch things over and over again. Um, I just think I absolutely cannot wait to see the show. Christina, what was it like for you then to think, wow, I've got this, this part to take on because your background lends itself so well. If there was a part made for anyone, then surely LV was made for you. Yeah, it's. It, I'm thrilled to play it. I've it's, I've said for years and years and years that I wanted to play this part. Um, uh, I, as someone who grew up just singing and acting, and then started working as a singer and actor, I never thought ever that I'd be known for doing impressions. Even though, like the character of LV, I very sort of naturally did impressions while listening to music and watching people on television and movies as a kid. I had an ear for mimicry, but I certainly didn't take ownership of it. Certainly never thought, oh yes, I will make this part of my career. Like never had a clue that that would happen. So considering I grew up 
and I, I saw the film of Little Voice. I was in high school or something like that. And my my father brought it home, much like LV. My father was the one who introduced me to different styles and genres of music. And he went, you watch a lot of British television and movies. And you know this actress, Jane Horrocks, from Absolutely Fabulous. And she's playing this character in this movie that was a play about someone who does voices like you. And so he brought this movie into my life. And uh, I saw it and I was very much like you, like obsessed with it. Just like, this is and what an interesting story. It's not a story, particularly coming from the States in New York, to see that little glimpse um, into a, a um, like a blue collar British family of that time period. It was an interesting view, not one you typically get in Hollywood movies. So I found that interesting. But the story, you know, I, the, I always say this play, Jim Cartwright's script so beautifully balances the light and the dark, the comedy and tragedy in everyday life. And even as a young adult, I got that from the, the film saying, gosh, this is really funny and it's really tragic. And it's an odd movie, an odd story to connect with so many people. Um, but again, like Shobna was saying, regardless of my doing impressions, which is I know what you're after here, but regardless of that, this story was so appealing, this modern day fairy tale and how fairy tales aren't always what you expect or they don't turn out the way you think they will. It just is some, for some reason, it's so accessible and there's something that everybody can relate to from it. So if you take that as an actor, that's a joy to get to, to bring that forth. But then to know that I then get to do these impressions, which again, is just crazy for me um, that I that I get to do them in this piece. And I'm so quiet for so long. <laughs> and then I sort of blast out these impressions. Um, it's it's really fun. And it's a challenge too, because people, people ask me about, oh, that must be easy for you doing the impressions. But it's also kind of funny because I can't do them exactly the way Christina would do them. Like I would be more animated and wacky and crazy and go for a laugh or something. And LV, when she does this performance, she has never performed them in front of an audience before. So she's doing it very differently without the awareness of a seasoned performer and just, uh, you know, different. So it's it's me doing impressions, but it's also LV doing the impressions. And it's just, uh, I don't know, I babbled long enough, but it's been really No, I was going to say, was, is, was that a hard thing to do then, to, to, to pull that back? Because as you say, in your mind, you are a seasoned performer. You've done so many things in your career, but then to perform as LV and have to I was gonna say, forget those skills, but act as though this is this is a revelation to you. Yeah, it's 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 tricky, and I've I've, I've found it change a bit already in the the few cities we've performed already with the tour. Um, just feeding off my changes in the show and the atmosphere and the audience. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I went back to me. You always go to the source material because that's what LV did. That's what she had. So you listen, and then you think, what clips would she have available to her? Because YouTube was not available. So what would she be seeing? So it's it struck me that she'd be listening to a lot of the classic recordings, like the original recordings. But when she watched them on TV, what time period is it? And what would that be? And so that's why when I do Shirley Bassey, I even though you hear her, you know, her original version of Goldfinger, you might hear in the play. But she never really sang it ever again, the way she did on that recording. She had so much more character and nuance and isms, and she really pulled out the Bassieisms every time she sang it live for the rest of her life. So I found find it's more um, interesting for me to kind of do the physicality of the the more mature, older, seasoned Shirley Bassey. And I feel like LV would have seen that and been like, that's what I should do. So I've, I've had to make those decisions myself, but hopefully, hopefully it's all working. Yeah, when you were a, a child, you were saying about impressions sort of came easy to you what about now do you have to work on them are you is it constantly training them are you you, you get something you're like i need to work on this more or does it just come very very easy to you it really depends on the voice and what is required every uh everyone is different um i don't I, i'm not learning i, I should you shouldn't really say this, but it's honest because I'm not someone who is like, I am an impressionist first and foremost, <laughs> and it is my bread and butter. I'm not really working on a million new impressions at any given time. If something inspires me, if a voice or a celebrity or something comes that inspires me, I'll do it on my own time just because I want to. If someone asks me to for a job or something, obviously I'll work on that. For this show, um, there is uh, an impression I've never done before in my life. I had to learn Scylla for this uh, one. Yeah. Um, and then everyone's like, oh, she's easy if you're speaking as her. I was like, yeah, but I'm not speaking as her. So I'm singing as her, which is very different. And so so I had to 
start from scratch there. You listen to her too much, a lot of Scylla. And, uh, and then you try to do the voice. And sometimes I record myself and I listen to it. I don't take video of myself, but then you also try to get mannerisms. If I watched myself, I'd never get anywhere. I hate watching myself. <laughs> Listening is bad enough. Got to interrupt um, there and go, a Laura, Laura, Scylla. Show <laughs> 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 Can you yeah, hear so, me? So it's good. No, I can't do you. Come Maybe on. by the end of this tour, we'll give it a go. But, uh, <laughs> I no, but I, I love it. Some, are, some come more easily than others is really all there is to it. You got to do it wrong a million times before you get it right. But, but yeah, some are more easy than others. Uh, now, Ian, people will know you instantly from, from, from your, your career on, on the small screen and, and, and all the dramas that you've done. What is it like then for audiences to see you? Because they're so used to seeing you maybe back in the day in, in Emmerdale or, or Casualty. Or, but, but now, I guess, on stage, race a very different i don't know what it is like for them to see me you know what i mean I'm, i don't know it depends different different venues have different reactions i've been booed in some of the places <laughs> like doing very dare they. I, I hope it's i hope it's because i've taken them to that place emotionally not because i'm rubbish <laughs> but um it's it's not um <laughs> yeah um, I don't know. It seems to be going down well. So, um, yeah, whatever I'm doing, I think I'm doing right. But, um, yeah, I suppose, you know, you know, we're all actors at the end of the day. And, um, you know, um, there's, there's people sat in, 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 the, in the auditorium that have probably never seen me on telly. So um, they're just seeing the character, hopefully. You know what I mean? Did you know of, I mean, you, sh you certainly would have known of Shobna, no doubt about it. Um what about Christina? Did you know of her and her impressions and her singing ability before you took on this show? My girls did. My girls, <laughs> I think my girls follow um, Christina before and um, especially I think Layla, my 16 year old, she, she's got bigger jazz hands than I have. So, uh, <laughs> I think she's, uh, so she, she already followed Christina. She was like, Oh, I follow her. I follow her. <laughs> but, uh, she's Northern also. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have to say so. that Ian and I have played husband and wife before. Now, how did that go down? And I see at the moment you're far away from each other. <laughs> you Is that anything boxes. to do with it? <laughs> no, I'm underneath Shobner's settee. <laughs> uh, actually, he's, uh, he's underneath my bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And long may that continue. <laughs> how, I mean, down that how... slipper that you've lost. <laughs> oh, tar love. <laughs> so, go on, Shobna. What's Ian like? <laughs> he's all right. He's all right. He's dead decent. <laughs> How is it when it's, me, you know, what you go from... laugh sometimes, you know, she, she did this something. I won't tell her what she did, but I opened we, we have a, the we have a sex scene and We have a sex <laughs> scene in this and he says, I sound like a Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> <laughs> She's sniffing in my ear as I'm actually trying to do my business. It's like, a, it's like I put a little bit of dog food in my ear and she found it. <laughs> The, the oh, chemistry it. between uh, Shobhra and Ian is, is fantastic from day one. And it's fun for me because I'm supposed to be silent upstairs <laughs> listening to all this. And I just, I'm not supposed to hear it. And I, but I hear them and it makes me smile. It's like, no, I'm not supposed to hear this. I'm not supposed to smile. So <laughs> I would say it's very true that we have a very, um, a very giggly cast for a sometimes very serious show. <laughs> Do you know what, I think though? I think, I, I, you know, there's something that fascinates me because you guys essentially are, like, together for such a long time on this tour. It has to work. You guys have to work together. Yeah. What's it like when you guys tour from then city to city and place to place? It's handy, obviously, uh, that Shobna and Ian have worked together before. But I guess other than that, surely there's a little bit of potluck involved as to whether or not you're all going to rub along nicely. I think it's I think it's down to... Uh, I'd, I've I've not worked with um, many companies that I haven't got on, um, but when I have, and there's a slight little um, flaw in the happiness, it, it's not a nice environment to work in, you know, because you're all stuck together on the same, you know, good shit little voice, you know. So it's down to everybody to make it work and make it happen, and luckily, you know, this this time round. Um, everybody's getting on and we're all having a laugh. You know, it's it, 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 it's it's one of these situations as an actor where a, a band of actors are put together 
uh, and you're you spend a long time with people who you'd probably never ever have spent a long time with so you know you have to kind of cherish that and um and nurture it and you know hopefully you you know you might have one or two lifelong friends after after jobs you know i've done jobs and i don't keep in touch with anyone i've done other jobs and we all 15 of us keep in touch and we've still got like a whatsapp group that we have banter with you know twice three times a week you know it's you, sometimes you just get lucky sometimes it works you know and um, oh, so the question is then this has worked Shobna, have you got a WhatsApp group, but you've <laughs> but but you've muted Ian out, maybe out of it. He doesn't know. She hates WhatsApp. Say, I was going to say, I'm never speaking to you again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's I think it's it's wonderful. We do have WhatsApp groups. I've got. Mm. I'm still on so many. I have muted a few, though. I have to say, <laughs> after a while, it, it it can become too much, and I have left a few as well. I have to say. <laughs> I think, you know, we talk about theatrical families and that's what it's like. I mean, sometimes you rub along well, sometimes you don't. So that's how it is, really. It's it's that kind of thing. You know, as a family, we're we're all stuck together, whether we like it or not. So we've just got to mm. sort of work it out and work through it because otherwise we can't do our job. Yeah. And, you know, I have to say that has happened to me on yeah. tour before where I haven't been able to do my job. But um, now, now I'm older as well. I think that I, I let a lot of things by as well. So you just kind of, yeah, I'm actually touring with my son as well. So it's not only a theatrical family, it's also. <laughs> how is that? <laughs> how is it? Uh, yeah, really? come how on. is it? Tell how us is everything. That? How is it? It's all right. I mean, Ian, Ian's now surrogate daddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I tell you, it is weird to be part of a cast when one cast member shouts across the rehearsal room mum can um you know uh, yeah you know i've never had that before you know? yeah <laughs> i think yeah. it's funny so sometimes i remember particularly in the rehearsal room everybody walked in and you know we're all in our best behavior you know you're rehearsing going through the script and and shobna and akshay um were very much just like you know actors at the table not mother and son but so to see the little bits creep in where it was like <laughs> Like, honey, do you want this? Or, 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 or mom, can I do this? And, and it's sort of, it was nice to see that. And of course, now that we're all more comfortable, there's more of it. But it does actually make all of us, even though we're not, you know, Shobna is certainly not um, mother hen in any way to the company or anything. But it's when you see a relationship like that, it immediately, I think, bonds you all more too. So yeah, that's nice. I, I like having having you together on the tour. It, it is funny because Mari Hoff screams a lot. She shouts and screams a lot. And everybody who who knows me think I am very softly spoken, but actually I had like a secret smile, knowing full <laughs> well. <laughs> so we're, the world is getting to hear what actually only actually has heard prior. <laughs> is it is I mean, it one of them? I'm, is it one of them, Shona, where you know before curtain goes up, you uh, you say, "Have you been to the toilet? Have you been <laughs> that the, the very much the parent thing, which <laughs> which well, you do." So to parent a 27 year old man is quite hard. <laughs> oh, you're not cold enough. But no, but how is that relationship? As Christina was saying, you know, sitting around the table as actors, you are obviously got that relationship, but you're, do you, you know, keep it as that, you know, you're an actor, I'm an actor. And, you know, when we do script read throughs and things like that, it, it's as professional as you like, or is it hard to, when it is a, a, a well, family member? Do you know what? It's hard because I, I, I don't, I don't give him any, I don't, I don't give him many top tips because <laughs> I feel like, I feel like he might not take them from me. Um, yeah. He might secretly take some tips that I don't actually um uh seller's tips but you know disguise in a different way uh but he certainly gives me top tips <laughs> <laughs> i've had mo more notes than from my son than i've had from the director <laughs> <laughs> he's your biggest fan he's your biggest fan but just moving on then to obviously the tour is going to keep you busy all summer. But looking at, you know, when we were doing the research for this, I was looking at like all the things you've done and you've all had incredible careers and done something, you know, some amazing things. Is there anything that's left on your list of stuff you go, I would absolutely 
love to do that or have a crack at that, whether that's still continuing to act and perform or have you got sort of ambitions to kind of head into directing or producing? What would, is there anything left that you'd Let's like to do? Let's start with Christina on yeah. this one. Okay. Well, I have just moved um, from New York to London uh, because there is a lot that I'd like to do uh, left in my life and career, but particularly in uh, in the UK, in Europe as a performer. Um, I had a, I was briefly uh, performing in the West End once. I'd like to do that again in a play or a musical, wherever will have me. Um, I've performed on British television as myself, like on some TV shows, but never actually done any um, proper British TV. So I'd love to do that as well. Um, I'm I've, a lot of my friends at one point or another have all performed on stage at the Royal Albert Hall. My, and I performed in the Elgar Room at the Royal Albert Hall. I'd like to get on stage at Royal Albert yeah. Hall. There's a list of things large and small I'd love to do. Um, and I, because I love to do work as a, as a concert performer and also as a, you know, content creator for social media and TV and all that mm, stuff, mm. and then work as an actor, that's, that's quite a lot of stuff. So hopefully doors will continue to be open and I will always show up and walk through them and see what happens. But yeah, it's, I'd love to do a lot. And then if, of course, touring around England right now is fantastic and, and seeing as much of Scotland and Wales. And I just hope yeah. to see more of Europe now here too while I'm here. Mm. I got a whole Ian? list. We'll talk later. It's a whole list. What about you, Ian? <laughs> um, there's one format format that I haven't done and that's um, studio audience filming um, you know like the old school uh, sitcoms um, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's something I'd really really like to do and I think it's a it's a combination of using all the camera technique over the years but yet still eking a laugh out of the audience in the studio and engineering it in a certain way that they still laugh spontaneously on the third take or the fourth yeah. take, you know, um, and just the pressure. It's almost like contained live television. I would never want to do live television. Shodner has done live television, <laughs> or, although it was, I think it was as, as a corpse, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> but, uh, or you were asleep, her character no, woke I, yeah, up, wasn't I was, it? Uh, I was asleep. <laughs> 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 but um, I would—I I have no desire to do live television, but studio television work uh, to do a comedy or something in live studio theatre would—that's—that's uh, that's what that's—that's that's one format that I haven't done that I, that I would love to do. Mm. Cool. Shabna, I'd like to do a, a a drama with Ian Kelsey that we both play. <laughs> married, <laughs> we're married, and we're both in the police force. And we're both <laughs> striving for the next cheat. Write suit. it then. I'm yeah. Just thinking. Yeah. 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 Get a pen. Get it written. Christina. Christina could be our mascot on the dashboard of the car. <laughs> <laughs> or if we put put a blue hat on her, she could go be ba be ba, and we put her on our roof. <laughs> yeah, that's great. No one's ever made these sort of short jokes to me before, Ian. Very original. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was thinking. Christina can be our American boss that has to deal with both of us going, I think it should be me. I think it should be me. Oh, yeah. I've had enough of you two. I mean, you get along or you get out. I'm hired. Yeah, I'm hired. That's the one. Good. Well, but I'd, I'd like it. I'd like to do it in the format of something like Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn 99. Yeah. yeah. Because I think that's it, up my you alley. Know, cause that would be quite comedic and fun and not too serious. Yeah. So listeners well, out there, listeners, viewers, whoever would like to write us, um, we're, we're already, we're in. Just yeah. <laughs> well, we spoke to we spoke to Hillary Bonner, didn't we, the the yeah. other week? So um, she, you know, we've we've got her number for stuff. <laughs> so maybe we could, uh, and she's into writing new plays and yeah, stuff she now. She's awesome. done one. So, so yeah, we could do it as a perhaps a live a live sitcom like Jenna Ladies and and sort of film it on the Friday and the Saturday to fulfil Ian's wish. Yeah. And then we could fulfil Christina's wish by being on British TV. And then <laughs> we can have uh, Bill and Fiona, who are also, and Akshay in the play, being part of this team. They can be the other coppers in the room. <laughs> i got to say, we would have a very good... That's a very good sitcom. Um, Christina, you're, you talk about your content creation and socials. Is that yeah. still a big part for you? Because it's, it's only getting bigger, isn't it, of YouTube yeah. views. Obviously, obviously, that's how it all started and you, Ellen and things like that. And 
is that still a big thing for you? And and do you feel pressure that you have to constantly keep up with that audience as well as other things? Oh, if you could see from my face, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan of that, and I've had to do it for a very long time. Mm. What I mean is I'm not somebody who naturally and genuinely is like, let me post about this. I want to film this. This is me in my dressing room. I have to do that. And I find things about it to enjoy, but it, unfortunately I see most of it as work. It's not yeah. where my heart is. I, I like doing things organically live. I don't as I've established, even though I'd like to do some TV, I don't really like watching myself. So I don't, if I had the option to delete something, I will always delete it. I'm always like, Oh God, no, don't do that. You know? <laughs> um, so the, the answer is, uh, I, I do feel pressure to do it. I think it is very important whether I like it or not, which is why I still do it. Um, reaching fans you already have and con connecting with them and continuing their engagement is is wonderful. And not just so I can work and whatever, but you it's why I do what I do because I want people to enjoy it. Without an audience, why am I doing it? So I want to keep everybody happy and entertained. That said, in that medium and the social media world and all those comments and everything, for every good comment you get, there's somebody making you feel terrible about yourself. And even if you go, oh, it's ridiculous, don't read it or don't think about it, it's still there. And those things are just terrible. And, and luckily I'm not someone who that's their bread and butter and that's what they do all the time. In fact, all the videos I had that went viral on YouTube were me performing live. It was not content I had created or intended to be on a mm. screen, you know, on that platform, that medium. Um, but I did use the, the, the pandemic time at home to um, then eventually create some, push myself and create some more, interesting, I'd call it like sketch comedy content that I wrote and created with my, my husband and we got the green screens and the fancy equipment. And I'm really happy with that stuff I put out. So I wouldn't have pushed myself to do it had I not had all that time and thought, well, you can't do live performance. What can you do? So that also taught me that, okay, it might take a little longer, might be a little more expensive. You might have to learn a few, you know, 10,000 more things, but it also reminded me that I can make it what I want and I can use it in a way that is not what everybody expects, you know? So the content I put out during the pandemic, I'm really, I'm really proud of whether a million people saw it or not. And so moving forward, when people said to me, well, if we did put you on a TV show, what would you like to do? I've got a list of things. So I'm always trying to find new ways to keep the audience and the viewers happy. But now I'm also thinking more about myself because otherwise, why am I doing it? So yeah, you've got like... to. Ian, are you on TikTok yet? Or... <laughs> the girls are. Yeah. Um... <laughs> No, I've, um, oh, God, I'd, it's funny, isn't it? You get, you, you know, I, I only do Instagram. I've got, I've got two Instagram accounts. I've got, um, I've got Ian Kelsey official. And I, I kind of, I, I used to do kind of just comedy, you know, just fun stuff, but I'd only do it when I was working. I was never one for kind of, oh, this is my Sunday dinner. Do you know what I mean? And all that. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, I've got another one, which is Ian Kelsey behind the scenes. And that's just purely for my behind the scenes photography, which is kind of my hobby, what I'm doing. Um, so um, I, 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 before I made a website for myself, um, ianKelseyPhotography.co.uk, <laughs> um, um, I, I just used to use instagram as a as an online um cv almost yeah. you know what i mean if I, if I do some more shots i've got some more shots that i've got of the guys that i've i've taken behind the scenes on on little voice so i'll probably bang them up tonight um but yeah you've got to be it's like christina said you know it's like work to her and i don't ever want to get into that Oh, I've got to post something today. If I'm in the right frame of mind, I haven't been in the right frame of mind for a couple of years to kind of post <laughs> some stuff. It's it's kind of private as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you know, I'm never one for kind of going. Oh, this is me on a country walk with my kids. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. um, I'd, you know, and I'm I'm not really bothered about how many followers I've got. You know, um, but I I do know it, it's it's a thing nowadays. I I know somebody who auditioned for for the chocolate factory in london and one of the questions in the audition was how many followers have you got yeah yeah wow. yeah because Gosh. it's um 
there's they will now look at a percentage of those followers will go ah oh, well a percentage of those followers will come and see yeah. um the show at the chocolate factory it only holds like 65 or 85 so that's quite a few if the if the followers are in london you know so it's maybe three full houses to those producers but if there's two actors which are equally as good as each other and one's got 10,000 followers and one isn't on instagram you know for a fact who's going to get the gig so it is a thing nowadays but you know we're of this generation of you know it's it's new to us this this thing you know what i mean i mean you joked about are you on TikTok and all that it, it's true we're, we're like you know I'll, I'll know people like what, what is TikTok? do you know what i mean i only know because i've got teenage girls um it's true um you know but there's another generation of actors that are coming up i were i did i did um, legally blonde in leicester and i was like the dad of the cast and all these young kids and i'll tell you what it was totally different they knew because of social media they knew what was coming into the west end who was producing it mm. who was directing it blah blah mm. when i came out of drama school in 91 you know you know if we had an audition we had to get the train up to london find the sheet music get a dictaphone with a tape mm -hmm. player go and find the pianist get them to record it for us this is before we've even started learning the song now there's 30 different versions of somebody singing the song on broadway and in the west end so these you know this generation of actors now have got the world in their pocket and and they all know of everything that's coming up which is you know that's not a bad thing it, it's fantastic you know but they us it's all new to us when we can only but help you know grasp on with our fingernails at this technology that's <laughs> that's happening you know show me something that fascinates me when, I, when i've been looking at, at your career is it's so varied i mean i was a massive Victoria would therefore <laughs> dinner ladies fan huge <clears throat> then I look at the you know the the impact you had when you when you were a uh, part of Coronation Street I think you're great on loose women where in in terms of like how you feel about it where do you find <coughs> sort of most joy because I guess like Christina said you want it to be fun you want to enjoy it and part of I guess being an actor is making it look like you're enjoying yourself where where do you find sort of most <laughs> most satisfaction I like I do enjoy doing comedic roles so um uh so i i do enjoy comedy more than more than anything but i think if you are a comedic actor you can then take people to the other side yeah uh so i i think that you know people who enjoy comedy are not looked at as uh, you know proper actors but uh, i would disagree with that because i think to make somebody laugh you have to be able to do that to oh, make some God, yeah. cry is a bit different. You don't have to because people are already ready to cry. Mm. They're more ready to cry than they are to laugh. Interesting Absolutely. enough. So that I really enjoy comedy. I do enjoy that a lot. So I think I think I don't know whether you've watched Whole Raisers yet. I'm in a Channel Four comedy at the moment where I play a, a glamorous granny. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I haven't. But I think I've seen a trailer for that. I think I've seen like a little snippet of it. Oh yes, I'm definitely yeah. watching it now. Yeah, so you can get it. You can stream it all on All Four, or you can, um, or you can watch it nightly on a Tuesday after Dairy Girls. Um, <laughs> So it's yeah. So that that's been quite fun. And again, you see, I quite enjoy the groups of people I do work with, like the group I'm with now, and then the group we work together really well on whole raises together. We're like a little family again. And then there's another there's another group of um, I work with Johnny Vegas and Sean Gibson on Murder They Hope. And again, I play another comedic character. I think I really enjoy those those kind of things. I do prefer. The theatre over everything else, though I have to say, you know, just as a genre, I do. It's funny. Like, it, it, I just it, it, like the exchange that goes on with the audience. It, I like the share. It, it's funny. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, we can ask both, but I think our experience of when we've this. interviewed a lot, uh, that's the experience, yeah. isn't it? Telly's, you know, great. Obviously, the work and etc. But as an actor, there's nothing like the theatre and live, yeah. and mm -hmm. I suppose the pressure of. You can't just go. Oh, can we I just do that, that again? Yeah. Cut. Do that again. It, you know. Yeah. You just. It's the pressure it. night after radio, night. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Ian I have to say. I have to say. just clarify something though. In television, there's not. Yeah. Can I do that again? Yeah. Can I do that again? Because budgets are tight. 
and time is tight and time is money so at the end of the day you think that you know actors get this take this take this take they don't mm. you've got yeah, to be especially ready. on doctors you've got to be ready <laughs> you've got to be ready to do it you know yeah. i mean without uh, and there's a lot of onus on actors in theatre to uh, in actors in television and film to be ready mm. you know there's hardly any rehearsal because there's there's no money and you don't rehearse especially on you know daily soap like like uh, coronation street eastenders uh, doctors uh, even casualty and you know all of those uh, continuing dramas you you know you just got to be ready and hats off to every single actor that's ever done any of that because it's 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 really complicated and and quite a hard thing to do you've got to be ready to be in whatever story's thrown at you mm. uh, immediately <laughs> without you know without without rehearsal without discussion really at some, at some times and at some points because you know that's the way of the scheduling you know right. bringing the entertainment to the screen mm -hmm. it takes a, a lot of a lot of work you know the disjointed of nature of it always every time i've done anything on anything that's um, television comedy or drama based it's the disjointedness of it you're not shooting things in order Therefore, you're not emotionally like, oh, I'm going from this scene to the next scene, and that what has happened in that scene is going to inform this scene. You have, like she said, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to turn something on. I mean, in theater, the most you you get taken out of scene sometimes because the thing ends, and you run off and you have a quick change or you have a sip of water, but you can still stay in the zone. And in, in, in TV, well, it's that's just a journey, so, isn't it? So from quick, half yeah. past seven, from half past seven to ten past ten. You know, yeah. it's a journey that character goes on. And if it's like that that night, then it's like that that night. But whereas on TV, that's working out of continuity. I, I, I really enjoy that challenge. I really do. Of stitching it together. It's like it's like it's like working with a jigsaw puzzle with no picture. It's uh, it, it, it's great. You know, you can you know, I, I remember working on God, back in the day, we, we used to um, we used to do all the outside location stuff and then they'd have the summer break and we'd do all the studio stuff and people <laughs> who knew that would, they were going to Spain used to do the location stuff and ask the makeup to give them bronzer <laughs> because <laughs> they done. knew that when they'd come back in two weeks time, they'd have a suntan and then they walked in the wool pack, they'd be brown. <laughs> you know, I, that reminds me of a story when uh, we, we, were, we were all going out to the soap awards and so we were all getting ready and I'd had a spray tan and we were in the Rovers for about four <laughs> hours. I think I went darker for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> whilst, There's whilst strong they, bulbs in that pub. Yeah, because they, they, um, yeah, because you know those big scenes in the Wall Pack or in the Rovers Return or in the or in the Vic or wherever you are in a pub, a wedding, a funeral, or in the pub, that always takes a very long time. <laughs> we had we had a tug of war. We filmed a tug of war, an outside tug of war with the Dingles and the Glovers or whatever. And this was on Slammerdale. And it was a it was a two day shoot, so they were shooting that way, doing all the business with the tug of war that way. And on the next day, they were shooting that way. And it, in between shooting, it had snowed, so when the <laughs> scene was cut together, it went green, white, green, white, green, white, green, white. No. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Work. I'm going to let you into my little secret. I absolutely love watching classic Emmerdale oh, and classic Corrie of an afternoon. If I mean, and it's on, yeah. there's no yeah. choice for me. <laughs> no. I absolutely love it. Hi, baby. Um, hey, guys, listen, thanks so much for uh, for joining us for this chat. Um, it's been brilliant. And and obviously, good luck with the tour, but good luck when you when you come to Blackpool to play the Grand Theatre and, and, and play the, the show here. The audiences, I know, will love it. Everyone's so excited. This yes. is a show, by the way, when we've said about this show coming, there's been a lot of excitement. I'm not Absolutely. saying that not a lot for everything else, but this one seems to yeah. be... You know, there's a real excitement think, about this show. I think we said because it, it covers so much, doesn't it? You know, it's such a brilliant story as well. And we honestly uh, couldn't be happy that you spared some time today to join us just for to talk all things Little yeah, Boys, yeah. but find out a bit more about you. So thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having and us. And I'll see you two later on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Eat Theatre Sleep Repeat. Like, share and subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode.